everyone. This is Reb Brad, and you're listening to the Soccer Chaplains United podcast from the Touchline. If you're a podcast regular and you've been listening to our Lesson from Lasso series, then you can go ahead and skip ahead a minute and a half to start the pod for the day. Well, it's been almost 25 years for me as a volunteer chaplain and press officer in and around professional football, soccer, as we like to call it here in the U.S., And with that in mind, I've been offering this occasional series entitled Lessons from Lasso, essentially giving a chaplain's perspective on some of the things we see in the hit TV show meshed up with my own experiences in the game. All the while trying to be careful not to over-spiritualize what's on the screen, but commenting on some of the elements I believe can be great points of personal and professional development, no matter what your role or relationship with soccer. So whether you're an athlete, a coach, a staff member, or executive, or even a fan of soccer or of the Ted Lasso show, I hope you'll find this series fun, creative, and having a little bit of everything for everyone that's in and around the game. Thank you for listening to the From the Touchline podcast. Here we go with another lesson from Ted Lasso. He's found the space, and he's found the back of the net. Just a little off foot, thinking he's going to go far post. Not strong enough with his right hand. Whips that one in. Far post, almost made him in. And they have, he has the hat trick, the second in his career, the third of the night, the hat trick hero. Talked about you're not going to be able to sustain that kind of pressure. To the corner, goes towards the near post, and you're the angle, and what a goal! What a goal! Have you ever been bullied? In the third episode, we see the subject of bullying come up as AFC Richmond's kitman, Nate Shelley, is being teased and picked on by a couple members of the squad. At the root of it all, Richmond's prima donna, on loan star striker Jamie Tart, and his unpleasant influence that he has on some in the locker room. For me, this episode brought back quite a few memories from my childhood and schoolboy days. I got picked on. I was the chubby kid with glasses. I remember being assaulted with derogatory nicknames like Four Eyes and a host of other names. Some, I have no idea where or how they came to be. Most of the bullying I experienced came verbally and emotionally. Some of it was physical as well. Certainly, some of the bullying came as a result of my physical attributes, and maybe some of it was just, you know, what a boy during those days was bound to grow up and face. I remember watching other kids around me be bullied as well, sometimes a girl because she liked stuffed animals and she would bring those animals to school even though it was supposed to be past that stage for her. I remember watching kids whom today might be considered to be somewhere on the the spectrum maybe being severely teased and made fun of. I remember trying to stand up a few times to bullies, but I lost more than I won. A number of times I was deeply shamed even into my high school years. Well, bullying has certainly gained a different level of attention nowadays. I don't know that there are strong antidotes to the bullying that we see go on in our school systems or on social media or in other settings like church. Yes, even in church. Church youth group can be a brutal place sometimes for our kids. So how do we deal with bullies? How do we handle bullies? Well, certainly Coach Lasso in this episode has a particular viewpoint of bullying. And I wonder, do you agree? Lasso articulates that if someone in authority, a coach or a teacher, tells a bully not to pick on someone, it will just make it worse. Well, Lasso believes that for the bullying, at least of Kitman Nate, to stop, it will take peer-to-peer type of confrontation. And he's betting his his chips that Roy Kent is going to be the one that will get after that. But what does the Bible say about bullying? And does scripture align with what we see here on screen? Well, I've really only time to paint a few broad brushstrokes here, so let me just share two things. First, God hates bullying. Proverbs 6, 16 through 19 says, There are six things that the Lord hates, seven, that are an abomination to Him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that make haste to run to evil, a false witness who breathes out lies, and one who sows discord among brothers. I would say that that word in Proverbs covers the gamut of bullying and even a little bit more. And there's a special emphasis here when God says, or or when the writer says, there's six things the Lord hates, seven that are an abomination to him. Uh, That tells us to wake up and pay attention. Here's the second thing. God tells us to depend on him for justice. 
Psalm 18.3 says, I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised and I am saved from my enemies. Romans 12, 19 through 20 says, Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. And to the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink, for by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. And I shared this a little bit in lesson from Lasso number five, the idea of loving the enemy. But we understand more here from the psalmist and from Paul writing to the church in Rome that we ought not seek revenge against people who've wronged us. We need to trust in God to see the injustice happening and to rescue us. Who knows how God might save us, but we must trust that he will. Maybe a peer will stand up for us. Maybe someone in authority will restrain them. Or maybe they'll simply be moved on somewhere else in life. Well, this isn't the end of the issue. There's more to bullying and dealing with bullies, but we'll explore it more and later. Well, thanks for listening to this lesson from Ted Lasso. This is Reb Brad coming to you from the Touchline.